Whoa. Okay. All right. Uh, well, anyway, what we're doing today is um, we've already finished all of our lesson. We finished the lab. And I understand um, it would have been nice if we, you know, didn't have the breaks. Like, winter break's fine. I'm glad we had winter break. But then we also had Thursday off because of the ice storm. Um, and I made that makes it choppy. But that's why I told you back on Friday that um, what we do is have another full day where we review. Another full day where we review the lab, labs you did. And then you still don't take the test tomorrow. You take it the next day. Is that right? So I think there's no excuse. There would be no excuse for you not to be ready. You got know that? Now, what I'm going to do today is uh, I had asked you over the weekend to um, have one of these papers and fill out as much as you could as much as you could you see that and if you already did then when i uh, show you this you'll say oh i missed that one i'll, I'll fix it i'll fix that but I, I got i understood the rest of that all right is everybody ready all ready for a good review all right so what we're going to do is i'm going to try to review uh everything that has to do with the labs and also the little mini lessons too now the last mini lesson we had <clears throat> had to do with this and um, I'm only gonna take you so far with this lesson, okay? I won't take you as far as I did with the honors class, but I do, I'll take you a little bit. This is what you learned about three chapters ago. How do you classify reactions? Maybe two chapters ago, get that? And right now, these are the five you know, is that right? Okay, now, when you were doing your uh, review for the lab, you should have been able to classify every one of the reactions, if not, I will tell you today. I'll tell you today. Oh, is he here? Um, he said he'll come take it after school. After school? Right now. Okay, all right, thanks. Thank you. Where was that? Where was that? What was I saying? Okay, you should have been able to classify every reaction. If not, I'm going to tell you what they would have been. You got that? Now, the other little mini lesson we had on Friday said, did you know, though, that what made this reaction actually take place was the formation of a solid and remember how it started with two things that looked like water and when you put them together a, a solid was made and that's called a precipitate okay that was called the driving force that's why the reaction actually took place but the little mini lesson i had said this for all the other ones if you're not double replacement everybody look up here if you're not double replacement then the, the reason why they work why do these actually happen is that somebody gives away electrons, somebody loses electrons, and somebody gains electrons. And that's why they work. Nobody loses or gains electrons in double replacement. Uh, but here they do. And say, well, how do you know? And, and they have a fancy word for it. One of them says, um, and here's your memory trick, Leo the lion, Leo the lion says what? Grr. Okay. So Leo the lion says grr. He said, what the heck is that? Well, LEO stands for if you lose electrons, you got oxidized. If you gain electrons, you got reduced. So they could call all four of these, besides calling them by the names you knew, they could say all four of these are called oxidation reduction reactions. Now, again, because that takes a long time to say that, scientists came up with a shortcut. What's a shortcut way of saying that it, somebody gained electrons and somebody lost electrons, and they call it redox. You get that? So when we go through these, I'll probably do um, one or two of them and say, here's how you know who got oxidized and who got reduced. So that's what I'm going to do on a test. I'll ask you, in table number one, um, First of all, table number one, did you already have table number one of synthesis? Did you already say it was synthesis? So it has to be redox, doesn't it? And right now is you're not sure who gained or who lost electrons. I'll show you how to do that in just a second, okay? But I, I will, all I'll ask you to do on the test is say who got oxidized and who got reduced. That's all I'm going to ask you. Which chemical? All right, is everybody ready? All right, for the first one, um, what I'd like to do is um, I'm going to go over to table one. And I'm going to do a, a little demonstration. And then uh, what will happen is I'll show you some things here. And then I'm going to unplug here. Going over to table one. And so you can set that right there. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, 
that's how it's stated. All right, so here we go. Does everybody have their sheet with them? Does everybody have your review sheet? All right, first question says, here's what you had to do. You had to put your goggles on, and then what you did was, there it is. You had to take a piece of copper, and what color is copper? And I know, actually bronze is kind of a dark color. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure I would call that bronze. What do you call it? Brown. I'm not sure I'd say brown either. Reddish, well, what do you think? Huh? Reddish, reddish orange. Uh, there's no orange in there, do you? Okay, so kind of like reddish orange or copper colored. Oh, how about that? Is it colored like copper? Okay, all right, here we go. Um, can you turn that on for me? All right. All right. So what you did was you took this copper and your your uh, your review sheet says I'm going to let it react with oxygen in the air. Okay, let's let it. Go ahead. Go ahead. And why why won't it react with oxygen right now? It has to have activation energy, right? There's a lot of experiments, a lot of reactions that won't take place at room temperature, so you have to kick them in the butt. So you got you got to give them a little activation energy, right? That's what I'm gonna do. And so you, you gave us some activation energy. And it, as soon as you pull it out, you'll see that it's not the same color, is it? Now, some of you took the extra time to figure out what would happen if I let it cool. Can I scratch that black uh, kind of silvery, what do you say, silver gray material? Can I scratch it off? Yes, you can. So you actually did have a chemical reaction here. And um, what was it? Copper reacted with what? Oxygen to produce what? And which copper oxide is not an always metal, is it? Copper two oxide. You had to look it up, didn't you? Okay, so let's take a look. Another thing I asked you to do was to see whether or not this thing was hot enough to catch a match on fire. And it was, wasn't it? But then I asked you to do what? Put it back in a flame. And that's called doing the match thing. What do you see here? See that green color? Well, I wanted to show you that because there are um, there are a lot of metals that do this. There are a lot of metals that, when you excite them, they will give off a color, and you can kind of identify them that way. As a matter of fact, they when they uh, make fireworks, if they know they want to have a green flame and in in a, a green thing in the fireworks, they'll use a certain chemical because when you excite them, and they use regular explosives to give the energy to activate energy, activation energy. So I made some other little things for you here. Um, I'll show you this one first. This is copper sulfate, copper two sulfate, and it has copper in it. Now watch what happens when I put it in here. What do you see? So copper in a flame test gives off a green color, doesn't it? Is that right? Now you might want to write that in the margin somewhere else, but yeah, that you already knew that that's probably what the green color was because copper can give a green flame test. Here's one. Uh, this one is called um, strontium. Okay, here's strontium. Uh, now what I had is some strontium nitrate and I put it in here. So there are strontium ions in here. And watch what happens here. Ooh, hey, uh, Madison, can you do me a favor? Turn off both sets of lights. And I think you'll see the color a little bit better. Strontium. You see that? It's kind of like an orange red. Is that what you would say? Orange red? Okay, so strontium gives off that kind of a flame. Here's one. This is, a, I took table salt and sodium, sodium gives off a flame test. Here we go. See that bright yellow? All right, so sodium is known to give off a bright yellow flame test. Not everything gives off a flame test. Um, here's one that's probably the, the least, I probably should have concentrated a little bit more, but it, it should come out, it's supposed to be light lavender purple. This is potassium. And if you don't see the purple, I may have had to make it more concentrated. Can you see a little bit of purple? Or is the blue kind of hiding it? Or the yellow is kind of hiding it a little bit? That one didn't come out very well. It was all right. This is my favorite. I saved it for last. Uh, lithium. This is lithium chloride. I put it in water. So it has lithium ions in it. Ooh, I, like that. I can watch that all day. Kind of a scarlet red, see that? Ooh. Okay. Anyway, I want to show that to you because um, 
the fact that you got a green flame there told you that there was copper there. Okay, very good. Now let's go back. Back. Ask your chicken lights on for me, please, please, please. So here we go. <clears throat> now the more you uh, the more you talk, the better this is gonna come across, all right? Let me get my um, so I get my red pen out here. I don't have it. All right, so take a look. Activation energy, yes. Uh, so what would the uh, the special metal, uh, copper metal if heated enough can give a blank flame? Right, so it says here, um, special note, copper metal, if heated enough, can give off a what color flame? green okay that was green and let's do some other ones what was potassium that was the weakest one what about lithium that's brilliant red wasn't it like scarlet red strontium was kind of like a orange red and what about sodium yeah bright yellow let's go back up here now Activation energy, energy that you needs to be added to get a reaction to start. Why doesn't the copper react with air? Right now, at room temperature, it's only bouncing around like this. Each piece of copper is moving, but only like this. And when it runs into oxygen, there's not enough energy to combine with oxygen. But when I heat it, what happens? When I heat it, they both start, uh, the copper starts going like this. Now when it runs into oxygen, it'll combine and say, I'm going to make copper two oxide right here. Now, again, why is it copper two oxide? Because the charge on the metal is plus two, right? And I had looked that up. It could have been copper one oxide, but it wasn't. They said it's copper two oxide. Now, one of the questions on the test will say, write out the balanced equation for that reaction. Could you do that without looking? Copper plus O2 from the air, right? Made what? CuO, and then I just have to balance it, don't I? Now, what I would ask you, I, I'm not going to ask you to do this fancy stuff here. We did that with the other class, and I'm not doing that. I would ask you this. Who got oxidized? Now, what I want to do is, we did this little thing the other day. <clears throat> Any element not combined with another element, you give it the oxidation state of zero. And then any element that's in a compound, give it its normal charge as an ion, plus two, minus two. Now, can you see where copper changed its charge? And can you see where oxygen went from zero to minus two? How, how does any element change its charge? And, and by the way, the protons and neutrons are deep, deep in the nucleus. They're not involved in chemistry. The chemistry comes from electrons. So how do things change your charge? Well, somebody can lose negative electrons. What happens if you lose them? If you lose negative electrons, what happens to you? You become more positive. So if you think about a number line, who became more positive? Copper went from zero to what? Oh, you became more positive. So if, when you lose negative electrons, you became more positive. So what I would ask you on the test, I'd say, who got oxidized? And what would you say? I'm not going to have you do the rest of it, okay? That's something we did in honors class. Not, I don't worry about that. But copper went from zero to plus two, didn't it? And so it must have gotten more positive. And what about uh, gain electrons? What if you gain negative electrons? What happens to you if you're neutral and somebody throws some extra negative electrons on you? What happens to you? Don't, don't you become more negative? So who became more negative? And look at oxygen. It went from zero and dropped all the way down to what? Negative two. So that's him. So who got reduced? Oxygen got reduced. Who got uh, oxidized? Copper. That's all I'm going to ask you. I'll say who got oxidized. Okay. Now, let's go to the next part. Uh, the next part was interesting because it was kind of quiet. And as a matter of fact, I didn't need any. Uh, the only activation energy I really needed was room temperature. Room temperature was plenty. It was plenty. All right. So here we go. This is reaction number two. 
Now, what were the reactions? Well, nail, but what is a nail? Um, I didn't use aluminum nails. I got the standard nails that some people call them steel nails, but steel is an alloy made mu mostly of what element? Everybody look at me, okay, because this is a review. What is it? Iron. iron. So one of the reactions was iron. That was the nail, wasn't it? And what was the other stuff? This blue stuff, what was that? And don't say copper sulfate because there's, that's not always metal. So you have to say what? Copper, copper two sulfate, isn't it? Okay, now, I didn't have to add any more energy. I just had to stick the nail in there. But before I stuck the nail in there, what I had to do to it? I had to clean it with what? And on a lab test, I'll ask that question. I'll say, what did you clean the nail with? Hey, I was there. Steel wool. Get it? And what happens is, over time, oxygen will combine with iron and make a coating. Well, I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of that coating and have iron. I just want to have iron. See that? So then you put the iron in the copper two sulfate and something happened. What happened to the nail? What happened to the nail? It changed from what color to what color? Silver to kind of like pink, salmon, what'd you call it? Is that what you called it? Maybe you don't like the word salmon colored. Uh, pink, salmon, okay. Anyway, it changed here, but you know what? Um, some of you didn't stick around long enough to see what would happen after about 20 minutes. You know what happened to the solution? One of the lab questions asked, what happened to the nail? It changed from silver to um, kind of salmon colored, but what happened to the solution? Who knows that? It went out? If you leave it overnight, it will, but if you just wait um, until the reaction's over, it kind of changed from blue to clear. Now, that's what's interesting to me. That's what's interesting. That's, that's what made this thing very interesting to me. So let's write out the balance equation. All right. Ready? Iron plus what? Copper 2 sulfate yields. What kind of reaction is it? By the way, this was a synthesis reaction, wasn't it? But it also was redox, wasn't it? How do I know it's redox? Because see how they change their charge? Now look down here, what's this one gonna be called? It's single replacement. Single replacement. So the iron kicks the copper out and makes iron two sulfate. Remember, it has to be iron two sulfate because it's not always metal. And who got kicked out? Copper. Everybody get that? Now, um, what a lot of people didn't understand about this, a lot of people kept, they kept thinking, wow, this is so easy. The nail got rust on it. And then you stop thinking. You stop thinking. It's not rust. What rust looks kind of orangish. What is this stuff? It's not rust. Who knows? Take a guess. Nobody has their hand up. It's copper. This right here is copper. If I took it and I took some out off there and I put in a flame, you know what happened? It would turn green. It would give a green flame test. This is copper. Look at the single replacement reaction. What, what got kicked out? Copper. Where'd it go? It's right here. It's on the nail. This is copper metal. What is this right here? Now help me out, okay? I need to help you a little bit here. What kind of copper is this? Starts with an I. What kind of a compound is a metal and a non-metal? Ionic. What kind of what kind of copper is this? Starts with an I. Copper ion. When you mix this with water and it says AQ, copper ions are floating around, sulfate ions are floating around. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is that what makes this blue? It's the copper plus two ion. I could go back in the storeroom and I could go get some copper chloride and it'll dissolve in water. Guess what color the solution would be? I need you guys, we gotta go a little faster than this, okay? What is it that gives this thing the blue color? It's either the copper ion or the sulfate ion. Which one? Not sulfate. It's the copper plus two ion, okay? If I went back and got some copper chloride, and I, hey there, welcome back. Can you see if you can find a sheet that looks like this? Uh, wait a minute. I might give you another one. I'll give you one that's already filled out. Uh, 
So you take that. Thank you. All right, now, um, if I have any kind of copper ion and it's in solution, it'll make it blue. So what's interesting about this one is this, what was on the nail was copper right there. But why did the blue color disappear? And, and that's what's interesting because this kind of copper plus two ion, it looks blue. But what does copper metal look like in water? What if I put a, a nice shiny copper penny in metal, in water? Is it gonna be blue? No, this is not blue. So what happened is, what happened to all these guys? They turned into what? Now, I want you, this is the hard part. Here's the hard part. How did plus two, how did copper plus two change into copper zero? Was it oxidized or reduced? Wait, let's think about this. Leo, if you lose negative electrons, you become more positive. Did you become more positive? No. You must have gotten reduced. Is that right? So you must have gained electrons. Oh, yeah? Hey, copper. Hey, copper ion. Where did you get those electrons from? Where did you gain them from? Somebody had to lose them. Who lost them? Look up here. If you're not combined with anybody else, you're zero, aren't you? Is he zero here? Iron went from zero to what? Plus two. Hey, that's you. So who got oxidized in this one? Iron. That's all I'm going to ask you. I'm not going to ask you all this other stuff, but iron went from zero to plus two, right? So he uh, lost two electrons. He became more positive. And then copper ion got reduced. So the nail changed from silver to kind of coral colored. The solution changed from blue to what? Clear. Now I have a little story. I've been out to out west a couple of times and I've been to Yellowstone. Ever been to Yellowstone National Park? Okay. Uh, the whole area has an, uh, magma reaches a little bit closer to the Earth's crust than, than a lot of other places. So it's a thermal area. And what that means is if you have water that seeps down the ground, that water usually gets hot. Now, sometimes uh, water can just get hot and it might get trapped and form steam and blow up like a geyser, like, like Old Faithful. Or sometimes the hot water comes up and there's a bunch of mud there and it's going bloop, 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 bloop. And they make these things called mud pots. They also have this saying where the water just comes up and forms like a, looks like a swimming pool. And um, a lot of the hot springs are clear. They should be clear, except for some algae that might grow on the side. Some of the algaes are orange and things like that. But there's this one great big uh, hot spring that has a bridge that goes over it. And that water is incredibly blue. Now, I hate to say this, but what do humans like to do when they're next to, uh, over, they walk over water or they a fountain, or if you go to Italy, the Trevi Fountain, what do people do? You don't know this what do people do when they get next to a fountain in this water they like to make a wish and throw a coin in there and so what do you think happened at yellowstone to make that hot spring incredibly blue where'd that come from the pennies by throwing pennies in there over time they react with other chemicals in there and they have copper ions come out and that's why that is incredibly blue have you ever seen that? Yeah, it's, a, it's like, it doesn't look normal, does it? <clears throat> if you ever go to a celebration station, you ever been there? Do you know why their waterfalls and all their water is blue? You know what they put in there? Copper sulfate, copper two sulfate. You know why? Because it kills algae. They'd rather you see blue water and not see algae. If you see algae, people say, oh, scum. Okay, so they put copper two sulfate in there, which kills the algae, makes the water blue. People say, oh, look at the water. Okay, ready to move on? All right, um, let's see. Uh, let's go to the next one, number three and four, okay? Now, you gotta remember this, and again, I know you spent some time on this, hopefully. What was the color of this chemical? At table three, you had this chemical, and you put it in a tube, you checked to make sure your, your test tube said Pyrex on it, and said, I'm ready to heat it, I got my goggles on, and what was the name? Um, they been doing the name. It's the longest name you've had all year. What was the name of the chemical that you put in the test tube? And it's up here. What is it? Copper two sulfate. Uh oh. 
pentahydrate. Now, what does that mean? Penta means five. And so this chemical, it doesn't say CUSO4 plus water, it's CUSO4 dot 5H2O. Now this is a weird chemical because it's called a hydrated crystal. So a hydrated crystal means there are water molecules locked up in that crystal and it's part of the compound. So what happened when you heated it? And this is the way you study. The way you study is I visit that table again, I put this blue crystal in a, ta in a test tube, is that right? And I heated it. And why would I want to heat it? What's that word again? What is it called? Activation energy. It, it, it would, it was going to decompose, but it wasn't going to do it on its own. I had to kind of give it some activation energy, didn't I? All right, let's go on. So it's going to decompose into this kind of a, what do you call it? What color did you call it in your lab report? It changed from a blue crystal to what? Whitish, gray, white. Is that what you said? And what was that? Well, you had to look it up. And if you did look it up, you found out that this decomposed into this and this. Did you have any evidence that there was water given off? Everybody in this room should be able to tell me something they saw that I saw water. What was it? At the top of the test tube, a whole bunch of water droplets and coming out was a bunch of steam, wasn't it? Steam's made of water. Where'd the water come from? You didn't add any water. It was part of the chemical. And so this is a decomposition reaction and it made copper two sulfate and uh, the word anhydrite. Anhydrous means without water, but, um, and then water. Then you had to let it cool off. Then what did you do? Now, some of you didn't figure this out, that's okay. Then you took this stuff here and you brought it to the next table. And what did you have to add to it? At the very next table, after it's cooled off, what did you add to this um, copper two sulfate? Water, didn't you? And what happened? It went from kind of a white, what'd you call this, white or gray white? What'd you call it? Kind of white, and what did it turn back into? Now some of you never figured this out, but what you did is the exact reverse reaction. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, so ready? Classify table three. What, what kind of reaction is this right here? Decomposition. Decomposition. Now, you went to the next table, and what did you do? Synthesis. Synthesis. And guess what you did? You took it apart here, and then you put it back together here. And that's why you came back with the same starting material. You could have taken this and gone back and heated it again, it would have turned white and given off water. So these are like reverse reactions, weren't they? Okay, now what I thought was interesting about table four, reaction number four, what I thought was interesting is you took this white crystal, you added some water, it turned back blue, but then what happened when you touched it? You touched the test tube. It was incredibly hot. What do you call a reaction that gives off energy? What's that fancy word for saying this is a reaction that gives off energy? Exothermic. exothermic. So the reaction over there, reaction number four, was very, very exothermic. Okay, now you're doing pretty well so far, right? And again, you don't take the test tomorrow. So you have plenty of time to study this. Let's go to the next reaction. It was the same table, but it's called reaction number five. And one of the questions will say, what were the two chemicals that you reacted with each other? And you have to remember them. You say, okay, what were they? Sodium carbonate aqueous. And how do you write sodium carbonate? Carbonate's minus two. Sodium's plus one. That's why I need two of them. So sodium carbonate aqueous. Why did I say aqueous there? It's dissolved in water. It looks like water, doesn't it? And you added to it calcium Chloride, calcium is plus two, chlorine is minus one, that's why you need two of them. And that was aqueous, wasn't it? So what did this look like? It was clear. What did this look like? It was clear. When you put them together, what happened? Did something happen or not? Now I can talk all period, but if you'll help me, it'll help you study for it, okay? If you tell me the answer, what do you, what do you see, Sierra? Say it again. Right. We know that there was a reaction because a white solid appeared. Now the chemical, what kind of reaction do you think this is? 
what's a b plus c d double replacement okay now so the double replacement one of the products would be sodium chloride and the other would be calcium carbonate wouldn't it now how do you know which one was the white solid and i told you that we did this for two different days on two different days we had this sheet out get that and i use this sheet for double replacement reactions and we look them up so if you look up this what will you find out what did you find out about sodium chloride in water what if you went home and took some table salt what would you see would you see a white solid no it's aqueous isn't it so which one was the white solid calcium carbonate also known as limestone chalk uh, that's what seashells are made of okay calcium carbonate now this one i'll try to trick you on the test maybe i'll say who got oxidized and who got reduced now that could trick you because that's a little mini lesson so what in a double replacement nobody nobody changes their charge i start out as plus one i end up as plus one i start out as minus two minus two nobody changed their charge so that's a don't get tricked by that there was no oxidation there was no reduction it's not redox what's another name though for a double replacement reaction that produces a solid what's that fancy way name of saying that a solid was produced it's a precipitate or it's a precipitation reaction are you okay on that let's move on we're doing well let's do the table six now again you got to pay attention to me okay and not only pay attention you got to get yourself involved if you're in and out if you're coming in and out of the story you're not going to do well all right down on that table there you added some uh, metal to acid uh, now if i don't show this to you what was the name of the metal and what was the acid without me showing you zinc you're right it was zinc metal and what was the acid okay so so far you would have written zinc and hydrochloric acid is the easiest acid to write the formula for hcl isn't that right now what kind of reaction do you think it is single replacement very good now if it is single replacement the zinc is going to kick out the hydrogen and make zinc chloride now zinc's plus two chlorine's minus one that's why you have to write this way right and what else was made and why did i write h2 why didn't i just write h it's a diatomic element isn't it okay now we know these bubbles these bubbles are coming out of the zinc wasn't it and i want you to put your thumb on the thing i want you to trap those things because hydrogen is less dense than air if you didn't trap it it would have gone out of the test tube and you wouldn't be able to explode them yes okay now another question i think is interesting how come you never see the zinc chloride that's it excellent see now you're thinking like chemistry students it's aqueous you can look it up on the chart you never see it because it's dissolved in water you get it you'll never see it but we did see a gas and that was hydrogen gas wasn't it now as far as redox let's <clears throat> i'm not going to ask you to do all this all i'm going to ask you to do this if you're if you're an element not combined with anybody else you're zero you're zero you're plus one you're minus one you're plus you're minus one you're plus two now do you think this is redox do you think this single replacement is also redox yes how do i know because look zinc went from zero to what plus two and chlorine didn't do anything but what did hydrogen do plus one to zero i already know it's redox because they changed their charge didn't they now here's the hard part again leo if you lose negative electrons you become more what so who got oxidized who became more positive zinc zinc went from zero and jumped all the way up to positive two that's all i'm going to ask you who got oxidized who got reduced you okay on that all right let's go to the next one it is a single replacement uh how did you know what the gas was and i will ask you this question what do you call the test for hydrogen gas they've been using it for about 150 years if i went back in time and said here's a gas being produced what is it let's do the 
what do they call this test for hydrogen gas? What name did they give it in the lab? Nobody remembers? Okay, it was called the POP test. Okay, now, the POP test has been used for 150 years, and here's what I'm gonna ask you on the test. I'll say, explain the POP test. Now, every year I have people that write these huge essays. It's only got three lines. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I didn't ask you how you made the hydrogen gas. All I wanna know is what's the test for hydrogen gas. So here's what you say. If you take a burning wood splint and put it in the gas, if it what? What happened to the hydrogen? It popped or exploded, didn't it? If it explodes or pops, then what was the gas? One more time. I, I got some gas, I'm gonna test it. Okay, ready? Put a burning wood splint in there, and if it, if it explodes, then it was what kind of gas? Hydrogen. That's all you have to say. What is the what is the pop test? Put a burning wood splint in there. If the gas explodes, it was hydrogen. Or you can say pops if you want to say pops. Now, this might be a bonus question. I'm not sure if it's bonus or not, but what was happening there? There was another reaction at that table. There was another reaction at that table. And it was the hydrogen gas, see diatomic? You know what happened when you put that flame in there? You gave it activation energy so it can do what? What did it combine with? When that hydrogen gas came out of that test tube, it combined with what? Oxygen. Oxygen in the air. You gave it the activation energy. <laughs> See that? And what did it form? What happens when you explode hydrogen? What do you get? Water. Now, because there was so much heat produced, the water was in the form of steam. You never got to see the water. It was in steam form, okay? But anyway, and I balanced that equation there, and that is the pop test. Let's go to the last one. And the last one, I, I consider that to be the hardest one. Um, as a matter of fact, when I did this over 20 years ago, I had to look it up because I wasn't certain what the products were going to be. I wasn't certain. But what did you start with? Can you imagine going back to that table over there? There was this liquid that looked like water. But what was it? Was it water? What was it? What do you call that? Hydrogen peroxide, right? hydrogen peroxide and what we did is why didn't i say hydrogen peroxide plus mno2 uh, i did put that in there i put the i put that black mno2 in there but here's a stage case this is a kind of interesting case this is actually a decomposition reaction that means there's only one reactant oh yeah why did you put the mno2 in there why and it's called a what what do you call this? It's a chemical. It's a chemical that speeds up a reaction or makes it occur, but it itself is not altered. What's that fancy chemistry word? Catalyst. catalyst. I've heard people use that in English class. The person's speech was a catalyst to make everybody else do this. See that? Now, so that's why you write it on the arrow. You don't write it on the left. You don't write on the right, you put on the arrow, you see that? It's a catalyst. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question on the test. I'll say, what was, the, um, what was the formula of the catalyst? And you say MnO2. I'll say, what, was the, what did the MnO2 become when the reaction was over? And it's kind of a trick question. What did MnO2 become when the reaction was over? MnO2. It was not altered. Everybody got that? Now, um, okay. What were the reactants for this experiment? Well, there was really only one, hydrogen peroxide, but I did have another chemical, a black chemical called manganese dioxide. Is that correct? Your book called it manganese four oxide. And what did it make? Now, I had to, you had to look this up, but I know that there was a gas. Remember how the bubbles, a lot of bubbles came out, the black, it kind of looked black and bubbles were coming out. And what kind of bubbles were those? Those are oxygen, weren't they? Now, for 150 years, what's the test for oxygen gas? It's not the pop test. And, and so I'm gonna ask you that tomorrow. Describe the test for oxygen gas. What do you say? If you put a 
Not a burning wood splint. What was it? You caught on fire. And then what he had to do? He had to take the flame out. So it was a glowing, a glowing wood splint. What happens when you put a glowing wood splint into oxygen gas? It relights. Now, why is that? The stuff that you breathe, that you call air, every time you breathe, you breathe in about 80% this stuff, which your body doesn't want. It's called nitrogen. But what's about 20% of every breath? I do want that. So imagine, here's a, a piece of wood that it's in 20% uh, oxygen and it, it's not on fire, you just see it glowing, see that? What happens when I put a glowing wood splint in 100% oxygen? When you made that test tube, what was all those bubbles? What was in here? 100% oxygen. Now, you get that? A glowing wood splint, put in the gas, it relights, doesn't it? Because you're putting in 100% oxygen. See, God was pretty smart. He didn't want our atmosphere to be 100% oxygen, even though you need it. Because if there was any kind of fire around here, you wouldn't need a fire department, would you? 100% oxygen, everything would burn brighter, hotter. They'd never make it to the house by the time it burned down, didn't it? So God said, I'm just going to make 20% oxygen. But if you put it in 100% oxygen, it'll burst back into flame bright. It'll be a brighter flame than normal. Okay, and again, um, I probably won't ask you this one because this is the trickiest one of all. Uh, if I were to assign these oxidation states, and I'm not going to get into this with you, so I won't ask that for you, but it is a redox reaction. And what's interesting is the same element, some of the oxygens get oxidized and some get reduced. Okay, all right. Now that's, that's, a, that's a complete review. Now what we need to do now is, um, I did this with another class and they said it helped. So what I did is I had them get three people at a table. And what they did is they went over and they had a sheet in front of them. They said, let's talk about experiment one. I said, ready? You have like three minutes to tell them about experiment number one, experiment number two, reaction number three. Yes, okay. Oh, uh, I, let's say two. Uh, what I really wanted is two new safety rules, okay? What were two things that you didn't know before? Uh, you already knew about wearing your safety goggles. You already knew about not reaching over a flame. Well, what was two things new uh, in this uh, lab? Don't point, the tube. Don't point the test tube. He had tested anybody. And if you're going to heat anything, whether it's a beaker or a test tube, what do you look to see is printed on the glassware? Pyrex, or what else, what's the other word? Pyrex is a special kind of glass, and the other company is Chimex. Might be Chimex, yeah. Anyway, um, just like at home, you just don't put anything in the oven at 450 degrees, do you? Hey, I think I'll put this drinking glass in there. Oh, well, that'll shatter. But don't you have baking dishes that you can put in there? That's a special kind of glass. Sometimes they call it Pyrex. Uh, uh, cording wear. Have you heard any of these? All right. I'll tell you what. So you have the next 10 minutes. Go find, um, go sit with about three people, uh, four if you want, and say, ready? Let's do a two minute uh, warning. Ready? Go. Tell me everything you can about reaction number one and reaction number two, all right? And I think it's going to help you. <laughs>